So just try this exercise for a moment to find out who you really are. What you do is you sit in a peaceful position, in a still position, and you simply observe the thought stream that's going through your mind. All right? And then you ask yourself, who is observing this thought stream? Who is making those judgments about that thought stream, about if that's a good thing, if that's a bad thing? Who is observing the thoughts? And then you pull back even further and you say, well, who is observing the observer? Who is observing the observer? And then an answer will come up, perhaps a name, perhaps a feeling. Now you're getting closer to who you really are. Then you ask, who just asked about the observer? Okay, so you've taken it again another notch deeper or higher. And you're getting closer to the locus of your being. Now you can continue this ad infinitum and you begin to realize that the person who's thinking your thoughts on a daily basis is not really you at all. Is more like a puppet of your real consciousness. It's more like a shadow of your platonic self, your ideal self, your multidimensional self. So when you catch yourself in a fit of fear, of anger, ask yourself, who is having this fit of fear or anger or frustration? And this way you will be able to detach yourself a bit what the Stoics call ataraxia. Remain calm because you realize it's not you, it's someone playing you. It's a role that's being played out. Like Socrates promoted this kind of thinking in the sense that he said, don't always believe your thoughts. Just because a thought happens to you, just because you have a belief, it doesn't mean that this is representative of you. It just might be you acting out uh, some traumatized uh, childhood memory, you know, something unconscious to you. It just popped out. Someone pressed a button, someone called you a name, someone uh, treated you badly, or you perceived it as such. So you really can begin to detach yourself from your immediate reactions. Let's go back and do the exercise. You have to imagine yourself like the sun. You are the sun. You are in a central position, okay? And you're just kind of watching these clouds go by. You're observing. So that's the first level of self. You're the sun and the clouds are going by. So you've already detached yourself. Now, if you take it one level up, what if the whole sky was observing through the sun who's looking at the clouds. So it's like leveling back. And then you can take it even further, as I was saying, and go back from the sky, the blue sky that we have here in the, in the atmosphere of the Earth, and you can pull it back even further. The position of the, of the moon higher up, and you're looking down at planet Earth. So just keep leveling up is what I'm saying. Pull away the veils. And you will see that we will, all of us, end up being in that beautiful, magnificent oneness of the universe. This is where our true consciousness lies. So you're going down levels and levels, and you'll see that at some point we are all connected, right? That's for sure, 100%. So basically you and I are the many faces of this one being, this one soul, this super soul that is universal consciousness. <laughs> so it's These just good to practice and pull away from all the drama and pull away from the game. Okay, pull away from the game because sometimes we get a little too caught up in the game. And this gets you into all kinds of trouble, wasting your energy, being depressed, getting angry, being reactive, being frustrated, 
at the world around you, all right? When, in fact, all the power is within you to pull away from the drama. And this is what Plato calls the view from above. And, and, and the Buddhists propose it through meditation, through mindfulness. It's all about that detachment. This is what it means to be truly free, my dear friend. And how Plato recommends that we are all prisoners within a cave when we're living unconsciously. And uh, slowly, unless we realize we're prisoners, we'll never escape. Because first you have to realize you're a prisoner of your senses, basically, of your sensory uh, ranges. So once you realize that you are not your body, you are not your senses, you are not your ego, you can be more free and detached and begin to be more leading yourself and guiding yourself and being, you know, who you really are in your power, in your confidence, uh, steeped in love, just drenched in and filled in love and able to love others, nothing to fear, nothing to fear from others because no one can take anything away from you. So in a way your heart, which is now closed out of defense because of ego, because of frustration, whatever, it will begin to open again. Ah, but it will open with confidence uh, in a way that nothing can hurt it, but it can, you're, you can continue loving others unconditionally because you start to realize that you're actually loving yourself in different bodies, right? You start approaching people closer and closer, and you're like, oh my God, I'm looking in your eyes. That's like your space suit. I'm just looking through. You know how the astronauts have their glass uh, little he helmet? You're like, oh, let's raise that glass and say, oh my God, there's a soul inside this body, this beautiful body. And isn't that interesting? A reflection of myself. Because down deep inside, we're connected in the backdrop, right? On the, on the higher levels, on the back levels. And you don't have to take my word for it. Just live it. Experience it. Just do that exercise several times over. Say, who is observing those thoughts? Who is observing those thoughts? And then who is observing the observer of those thoughts? So there's someone observing the observer. Interesting. But who is that observer? Who just asked the question? See? And now your locus of self becomes very relative, okay? It's no longer where you feel it is. Maybe a lot of people feel that their locus of self is kind of like behind their eyes, right here. But as you do this exercise, you, you, you begin to expand beyond that. Your locus of self is also from the heart. The heart is, is, is something like a second brain. Some people say it's even stronger as a brain than this one here. So you're here, you're there, and now you're also perhaps beyond your body and begin to observe what happens. Now the ego won't like that. He's gonna say, no, 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 I'm that body. I'm just that being right here. I'm the one who got hurt. I am, you know, John Doe. I am Jane Doe. I am a lawyer. I am a doctor. I am a, you know, computer scientist. I am uh, the victim of my mom and my dad and I have all this drama going on. You're not gonna take away my drama, are you? Well, it's up to you. Are you ready to give up the drama? And that will just happen naturally. The more you practice this mindfulness, self-observing and questioning method. For the meantime, keep practicing the Algestis method, filtering your thoughts. Remember, every thought you have that's causing you upset or frustration, just pass it through the three filters, ethos, pathos, logos. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it useful? If you want to know more about that, look in the link below. There's my book, From Fear to Freedom, The Three Golden Principles of Greek Philosophy to get you started. All right, my love. 
And now for part two, I have a special section, a meditation prepared for the members of my channel. So if you're not already a member of my channel, please go ahead and find that button, become a member, and you can enjoy these privileges of the extended versions of my meditations. Please share this video with your friends if you find it useful and write your comments below. I love reading your comments. Press subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Lots of love from Greece. This is Algistis.